Hey, Bruce Naylor here, The Frugal Tech, and today we're talking about improving your 4K video, getting the very best that you can out of this Sony FDR-AX53 camcorder. And is uh, this should apply to his uh, older brother, the uh, Sony FDR-AX33. This is the newer version. And of course, uh, some of this may even apply to the Sony AX100, but not so much. And uh, just a fantastic camera, but before we get started, a couple things to point out. You want to make sure that you have a um, SDXC card U3 because you're going to be recording in 100 megabits per second. So you want to make sure that you have plenty of storage on this card. This is 64 gigabits or a gigabyte storage, and I would recommend really a 128. Also make sure that you have plenty of extra batteries, the one that comes with the camera, you can figure it's gonna last maybe about an hour. A recording time, I buy these Wasabis right here. And uh, this is actually a higher capacity battery, but I got like two of them for uh, 30 bucks. Getting started with this camera is a couple things I think it's really important to know up front. And that is to familiarize yourself with this manual button here. That allows you to assign different functions to this ring on the lens. Everything from zoom, focus, white balance, exposure, compensation. That's all um, going to be right here on this ring that you can assign various functions to this ring. So make sure that you familiarize yourself with that. This lens is a Zeiss lens and it is 26.8 millimeters to 536 millimeters so you've got excellent range on this thing. I think what makes this camera so popular is the built-in balanced optical steady shot on this camera. It's not technically a gimbal, I don't believe, but uh, that's what I refer to it as, five axis, and does a fantastic job for smoothing out. I mean, who wants to watch 30 minutes, 15 minutes of shaky video? It's one of the selling points of this camera. Sony markets this camera as more or less a point-and-shoot 4K camera. However, it is capable of so much more, giving you things such as zebras, focus peaking, uh, spot metering with focus, uh, a lot of different controls. The big problem with this camera, from using it for professional purposes, is you can shoot, for example, in shutter priority mode, but everything else is fully automatic. You can, it, you can shoot in aperture priority mode, but everything else is fully automatic. You can use manual exposure on this camera, but you really don't have independent control over things like the iris or what have you. It's not a professional camera, but you can certainly get outstanding 4K video with this camera. In this video, we're gonna be covering just how I use this camera and the settings I use it uh, with. All right, so I've got this camera set up for lockdown shots right now in 4K, and I use it for product reviews. That's how I have this set up. So that requires crisp video, and it requires good exposure and white balance to get things just right on this camera. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and press on menu on the uh, menu here, and that brings us into this screen. And then we're gonna go to image size and quality, and we're gonna go into file format. Now you see you've got three different options here. One is for 4K, the other is for 1080p, and then you have AVC HD, which is your 1080p, and you can do slow motion and that type of thing in the AVC HD. But we're going to stick with this right here, which is the XAVCS 4K. So once we've selected that, we'll go ahead and tap that and click OK. The camera will execute on that, and now we're ready to go in 4K, but we're still not quite ready. We need to go back into the menu, back to image quality and size, and we're gonna go into record mode. And we have two options here, 60 megabits per second or 100. I recommend that you shoot in 100 megabits, and that's gonna give you the best possible quality out of this camera at this point. So we'll close out of there, and now we're back into the recording menu. And so the next thing we want to do is we want to go into frame rate. So at the fr on frame rate, you're going to see two options. We're on NTSC here in the US. So if you're overseas, you may be on PAL, which will have different numbers here, 24 or 30. 24p is recommended typically if you want a more cinematic look to your video, maybe a little bit more motion blur. I always record in 30p. And so we're going to click out of that. And now we're pretty much ready to go as far as the file format, the bit rate, and the frame rate of the camera. So we're going to go ahead and close out of that. 
and we're back in this main menu again. Okay, one of the important things to getting a really nice looking video is to get your white balance set right. And there's lots of information online about how to set white balance, but I actually have this little white balance card uh, thing here. And what you do is you're gonna set that in front of the camera, like so, where it fills up most of the screen. You could even zoom in on it if you wish, so we'll go ahead and do that. We'll bring it in a little bit tighter, where it fills pretty much the entire screen. And then we're gonna go back into the menu, and we're gonna go into camera mic. We're gonna tap on white balance, and then we have several options here, and we're gonna use, this one looks like a flower here, and that's the one, uh, one button push on there. So we're gonna go ahead and tap that as processing, and now we have saved our white balance. We now have our white balance set properly for the video. Now in this camera, basically when you change from the um, automatic white balance to uh, manual white balance, then you're gonna lose the face detection tracking for autofocus, and that's something you need to know. Now, I don't rely on autofocus when I'm doing product reviews. I use uh, manual focus on these. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna set our manual exposure. And one of the tools that I really like in this camera for getting your exposure as good as you can is to use zebras. So we're going to go ahead and look at our zebras and we're just going to uh, we're just going to go ahead and go down to this little icon here. Rather it's a little difficult to get there. There we go. We're going to scroll down to where we see zebras. We're going to tap that and we have our options either off 70% or 100. I set mine to 100 because generally I like my exposure a little bit higher on a product review, especially dark objects and so forth. And now we have that set. So when we, and I'll show you this, when we get our exposure too high and we actually in uh, manual exposure right now, you can see that I'm making it lighter. You see how that suddenly gets real bright and we, we see um, these stripes. That's, uh, that's your zebras right there. So you wanna set that so where you're not seeing those little stripes. There you go. You can have maybe just a smidgen, but the idea is to eliminate that and you know you have your exposure pretty well set. But again, that depends on the situation. Okay, so now I wanna set the camera for manual focus because autofocus doesn't always work right. Uh, again, when I do the product reviews and I'm moving things around and all that, I want my video to have a nice clear and be in focus and you can't really trust autofocus to do that. So how do we do that? Well, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the camera mic settings. Again, we're in the manual icon up here and we're gonna choose focus. And I'm gonna go ahead and select manual and now we're okay. And you'll notice that I have, you'll see some yellow on here, and I'll show you the reason for that, is I went into the camera mic settings, I went down to the camera with a little plus sign, tapped on that, and I have a, magne a focus magnifier turned on. You'll see how that works in just a second. But I also use peaking. And focus peaking basically says to me, whenever I see yellow, that particular part is in focus on the camera. As you can see right now, it's kind of focused on this area of the bottle and maybe a little bit of the label up here. How do we adjust that? So now I have the focus magnification turned on. I have the focus peaking enabled. And I have different colors. I can do white, red, and peak, uh, or yellow rather. And I choose yellow because that's a kind of an easy color to see. And I'm gonna go ahead and get out of that get out of that and I'm going to be back my main menu right there or the main screen where I'm recording and now I'm going to go ahead and press the manual button that's down underneath I'm going to press and hold that and I'm going to change that to focus and I'm going to press the tap the button and now that I'm controlling the focus and so when I move this wheel up here on the front you'll see the magnifier coming in 
And now I'm really tightening up my focus on here. I've got great focus. And of course I can jump back to exposure and so forth. Another way that I can do the focus and I can go ahead and press menu back into camera mic and I'll go back into here and I can choose spot focus. There we go. By choosing spot focus, I can then touch an area of the screen to come into focus and the camera will adjust focus for that particular area. This probably isn't the best example that you're seeing there. And that's spot focus. Okay, another way to not only set your uh, focus for a particular area of the uh, item, but also your exposure is spot meter focus on the camera. And so to do that, we're gonna go ahead and press menu, camera mic, and we're gonna use spot meter focus. We'll click on that. And now we're gonna, all we have to do is press a particular area and now the camera is bringing that into focus and adjusting the exposure. That's a very handy tool. I don't use it that often. I prefer to stick with spot focus whenever possible or just adjusting the focus entirely manually on the camera. Okay, so there's a few things you should know about this camera. This is not a professional series camera, but it does allow you to have control over shutter speed, or you can choose aperture, or you can choose the ISO, but you can only do one of the three at a time and the others get set back to automatic mode. And that is kind of frustrating to people that want to take their camera to that next level, but I'm gonna show you a few ways around that to get a little bit more professional results on this camera. The first thing, uh, if you leave everything in auto, and we'll go in here, other than, um, white balance which I have manually set if we go uh, now everything is set into full automatic mode so if I choose manual iris or shutter speed and a lot of people will tell you in video if you're shooting at 30 frames a second you want to set your shutter speed to the uh, 180 rule which would be uh, 60 frames per second on that so we'll go ahead and crank that down to 60, there we go. But now, uh, because of that, I tap on here, uh, even though I have that shutter speed, I cannot change manually the exposure. I cannot change manually the iris on this. But what I can do is do some compensation, and I do that through the little button, that manual button that's down in front, and I press and hold. There we go. And now, I can come down here and I can do what's called AE shift and I can do white balance shift on here. So I'm gonna do AE shift and we'll press the button back. And now I can um, go in here and I can adjust the exposure by about a stop. See that? So I do have some manual control using exposure compensation and that's something you're going to use if you want to use shutter priority or aperture priority on this camera. And uh, uh, again, I use set mine up with manual exposure, so I don't have control over the aperture. I don't have control over the gain or the ISO on this camera. Those are some of the things you kind of give up when you buy this camera, but you can compensate also with white balance. Now, when I Actually, go ahead and go back into the menu. Speaking of white balance, go in the camera mic. And we'll go ahead and put that back to auto mode. There we go. There we go. Should we move back there? Now I actually would have face tracking ability on this camera. So if you're doing any kind of vlogging with this camera, or you want a particular moving subject to stay in focus, uh, you'll definitely want to keep this in automatic mode for your white balance. I don't know why that relates to exposure and all the other settings the camera is trying to figure out, but Sony through their software has disabled that feature. Okay, the next area of, of this camera when shooting your video is, is stabilization and how important that is. Nobody wants to sit and watch 15 minutes of jittery, shaky videos. So this camera has got probably one of the best in the business um, stabilizers in there. And that's one of the reasons I think these sell so well. How do you access it and what does it do? So let's go ahead and go into menu, camera mic, 
and we're going to stay right here at this top selection, your manual settings, and we're going to scroll down until we find Steady Shot. Now you can see I have mine set on off. The reason I do is I have the camera locked down so it's not moving. But you have a couple different modes and one that's grayed out and I'll explain that just in a moment. You have standard mode and then you have active and there's another one called intelligent auto. Intelligent auto is not available in 4K. These work in conjunction with the Sony clear zoom system. And basically the camera, as I mentioned, has a 20 times optical uh, on its zoom. By employing the uh, active mode uh, on 4K, you will actually have up to 30. It basically punches in on the sensor. And if you're in uh, 1080p mode, then you could punch in up to 40 times zoom. Sony advertises 30 on the side of the camera. It's really 20 optical, 30 in 4K, 40 if you're doing 1080p. And uh, most people will recommend that when you have it off the tripod, go ahead and lock it into active mode. And that will give you the, the best possible um, zoom range on here and also eliminate the camera shake as much as possible. The intelligent auto, um, that again pertains more to 1080p video coverage, gives you a little bit more uh, digital zoom on the camera, but for our purposes, 4K video, that's where we'd want to be it if we're not locked off on the uh, tripod. Another mode you might want to work with is your uh, with your iris or your aperture uh, in the DSLR world. And to do that, we're going to go back into menu. We're going to choose camera mic. We're going to go back into the manual settings here. We're going to scroll down until we see iris. And here we can set it on manual mode. And you'll see that right now it's reading f.34. Uh, if you have the camera, this is a variable aperture camera. So it's 2.0 uh, on the wide end and 3.8 on the zoomed out range. And so you have to take that into consideration, especially if you're kind of zooming in, the image is going to get darker and the camera is going to go through adjustments in the brightness. You could lock down, if we go into manual mode, we can take it down as low as it's going to go here. So it's f.2 because we're, we're at the widest end of here. And what that will do is let in more light onto the sensor, and it should give that kind of a nicer bokeh in the background. This has a six-blade iris on it, so it's not going to be that buttery-looking bokeh, but it's going to be okay. But you still have to cope with the relatively small sensor of this camera. I'm not that concerned with bokeh on this system, but uh, you might be, and you so... This camera might not be ideal if you're looking for that kind of quality. You might want to look at the Big Brother, the AX100 or 700. But everything else at this point would be in automatic mode. I couldn't adjust the shutter speed, so if I click OK on that, uh, I no longer have control of the shutter speed, uh, but I do have my exposure compensation and white balance compensation on the camera. So you, you kind of choose one or the other, and so... I generally use manual exposure settings on here and I do the one push white balance to get the best looking white balance on here. I employ zebras and focus peaking and on, if I'm locked off, I'll turn off active steady shot. That's going to give me the most crispy video and of course with the manual focus, things tend to stay nice and sharp. And that's just what I wanted to cover with you on this camera. Hopefully you got something from this video. There is one last thing I guess I should show you, and that is uh, AGC. And so AGC is the automatic gain control, and that's got to do with your iris, your aperture, and how much light. So if you're trying to shoot in low light, how much noise or how much enhancement to the sensor will this camera permit? Now I limit mine to about 9 dB a gain. I think once I start getting any higher than that, I get a lot of noise in a darker shot. You can experiment with this on your, whatever your needs are on the camera. But for me, I keep it uh, at uh, plus 9 dB and, and call it a day on, on that. So this has just been kind of an overview of how to get the best possible image quality in your 4K videos of your AX53. 
with this excellent Boss system, the 20 times optical, the Zeiss lens on here. By the way, one uh, rec recommendation I have for you accessory-wise is to get yourself an ND filter or neutral density filter for the uh, uh, outside, especially a variable one. This is a 55 millimeter filter size is what it takes, but that's kind of like putting sunglasses on your camera because this thing in bright sunlight really can't compensate enough to keep from blowing everything out. So if you're going to do a lot of outside shooting, especially in bright, harsh light, invest in that. And that is how I get the best possible 4K video out of this camera. Hopefully you got something out of this. Thank you so much for watching. I look forward to your comments down below. See you in the next one.